Hey guys, so I got in a brand new SEMA SR25. It's a SEMA Platinum to be specific. This build is for a customer from out of state and I'm going to be throwing some upgrades into it. So the goal here is to get this guy up to 2.3 joules with 0.4 gram BBs. And the BBs that we're gonna be testing with today is 0.40 gram BBs from High Powered Airsoft. Wishtech.com if you wanna get yourself a bottle. And this is exactly what I use when I test my guns when it comes to the DMR platform. So if you're looking for that crazy FPS consistency, this is what I use. So with that out of the way, I'm gonna go over the parts that we're gonna put in this thing and then we'll do our baseline chrono. Okay, I got the parts all lined up. So we're gonna go from left to right, starting with. The spring. We're going to go with the M140 from Matrix, and hopefully this gets us our 2.3 joules. From past experience, that has got me there, but uh, we might shoot a little too hot. Next, we're going to slap an electronic trigger in it, because in these SR25s, the MOSFET and the micro switch in there are just utter garbage. They, they're, they're a hit or miss, and eventually, the one in this one is going to take a shit on this customer. So I recommended the Payron version 2 hybrid. It, these are my go-to electronic trains when it comes to reliability. Okay, so we got the EPES 24.5 millimeter nozzle. 100%, these work great in any SR25, given the length, especially when you pair them with, next item on the list, the Max Pro M4A. When installed correctly, these hop-ups are amazing. To pair with the hop-up, we're gonna put a Maple Leaf Super Macron 70 degree. When it comes to these Max hop-ups, and the Super Macron, this combination, I always put the Maple Leaf hop-up tensioner, all because the width of these are a perfect match for that little leaf that comes down that you see right there. The pieces that are in here interfere with how this bucking works, and you'll get issues with a consistent hop-up. Next on the list, we're gonna swap out the SEMA bushings to ESO bearings, these are Two and a half millimeter wide, the J cage, and then one solid bushing. I always put this guy underneath the spur gear for warranty reasons, just in case there's a mistake made by either myself or the customer. This guarantees that I won't have a failed bushing, and it's always the one underneath the spur gear. The gear set, I'm gonna give these guys one more try. These are Red Dragon 1881 SR25 gear set. At first glance, they look nice, but the issue that I keep having with them is the gear mesh and the fact that uh, the spur gear is usually warped. So we might use these, we might not. We might just use the sector gear and use SHS uh, bevels and spur. I don't know yet, but we'll find out when we get to the build. We're using this Prometheus 603 by 509 millimeter barrel. I'm gonna be putting it on my lathe here and I'm gonna be shorting it down to about 470 millimeters. Reason being is because this customer is gonna be using 4 old gram BBs, and if we keep it out of a 509 length, the back pressure that's created from the heavy BB, like the 4.0, will slow down the piston enough to cause premature engagement. I call that air braking. Okay, so with that out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this M120 in the SR25 because they make it pretty easy to do. And for funsies, I'm gonna throw .4s in the SR25 and see what it gets with the way the airsoft gun is. So that way, if you get one yourself, you'll know. Out with the old. In goes the M140. Okay, got the .4s in. Here we go, we're gonna do 10 shots on four O's. So it's shooting about 1.53 joules on point fours. So after the upgrades, we'll do a after chrono and see how well that improves. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is get this barrel shortened up and prepped with the Max Pro hop up. Get that all together. We'll move on to the next part. I'm getting a gearbox out of this receiver and I'll show you what parts are typically in these platinums. Got the barrel measured out for 470 millimeters and that's where I'm gonna cut it. Right on my lathe. Got the barrel in the lathe, and this is what I'm gonna use to crown it after we do our cut. All right, now I'm gonna cut this. And a one, and a two, and a three. Done. It's crowning time. Before, and boom. Okay, now that we got the barrel taken care of, 
I went ahead and disassembled the M4A, and this is the order of operation of how I, I put these together. First, I get it all apart and I have it all separated just like this. And the first thing I usually do is I put the bucking on the barrel and then barrel in, put my C-clip in, this guy, and then this guy. This O-ring is what holds this in place onto the hop-up. Then after that, I'll put that guy down inside the hop-up, and I'll grab that piece from, from one of these baggies that come with the M4A hop-up. Once I get that on there, with that spring, you want to make sure that spring sits in that that whole groove looking thing and on here as well. Sometimes you can use grease, put a little bit of grease in there and it'll hold the spring in pretty good. And then I'll put the hop up arm and that guy in and then this on and then I'm done. One thing I'll note is that when that guy is sitting inside here, you want to make sure that both sides of the Omega nub here are tucked right inside those grooves. Because if you don't, it won't sit flat. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get it together and move on. I got the gearbox out and the first thing I noticed that SEMA updated, and this is usually not the case with these SR25 Platinums, is that they got a full cylinder now. Look at that. So that means we don't need to upgrade the cylinder. All right, that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get this all apart and see if there's anything else new. And so far, there's really nothing else that has changed. Still using these garbage electronic trigger unit <laughs> with this micro switch that likes to burn out in these damn things. It's a good thing that we're putting that through under two hybrid in it. It'll make this thing a lot more reliable in, in that aspect. But they did, however, change the bevel gear. Usually it looks about like this color and it still only has four latches. So meh, I'm not liking what I'm seeing with those, these two gears here. And I might reuse this one because this pin right here is in the correct spot. And if you ever use a SHS or Rocket SR25 sector gear, you'll find that the roller bearing that's on them are sitting a little bit forward. They're not at almost the 12 o'clock position. As you can see, this pin, it's almost lined up with that pickup tooth right there. Here's the cylinder head. <laughs> Nothing new. Of course, you guys already know about the cylinder. Uh, it is made out of steel, by the way. Full metal rack. These are really good pistons. They can handle a lot of stress. And I really like that they put a guide o-ring on these pistons so that the metal on these metal piston heads do not rub on the cylinder wall and therefore scratch it to shit and yep sound piston head absorbs a lot of that impact when this thing is shooting and using these utter garbage <gasps> loose ass bushings and surprisingly these uh, bearings are pretty decent they hold up pretty well. I've seen other SEMA Platinums that are not SR25 use all six of these bearings and they hold up just fine. So it, that's what happens when you build a gun that doesn't <laughs> experience pr premature engagement. The bearings do just fine, especially the eight millimeters. Anyway, I do really like how they do their radiusing up front. It's so nice. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up, get these bushings out. I'm gonna grind down the metal underneath the screw so that the Payron version two hybrid sits nice and flush and as far as modification goes of the gearbox, that's about it. Uh, and I'm also going to prep the gearbox with some acetone, clean it up real good for the bearings and that one single bushing with better tolerance than this into the gearbox. I'm moving on to shimming and I did some fitment tests and mesh tests, yada, 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 with the Red Dragon bevel. Look at all those latches. This is part of the reason why. And spur gear. I tested. This guy is kind of barely warped. So I think we're going to roll with it. I think it'll run just fine. And the spur gear is not warped whatsoever. So, And they seem to mesh with each other just fine, including the OEM sector gear. And again, the reason why I'm using the OEM sector gear is because the placement of the pickup pin for the tappet plate is further back. So it doesn't pick up the tappet plate too soon and cause tappet plate premature engagement. To show you what I mean about the sector gears and the pickup pins, if you notice, I have the pickup tooth directly 12 o'clock, and you can see that the pin is almost directly underneath it. But if we go over the Red Dragon one, its pickup deal is right here. But if you look closely, it is way in front of the pickup tooth compared to the OEM. This causes tappet plate premature engagement in the SEMA Platinums specifically. And the OEM sector gear can handle a lot of stress, so you don't really necessarily need to replace this guy to get the result you're looking for. Shaming's done. Hell yeah. Okay, so I did a modification on the piston. I grinded that tooth after the pickup one and put a slant on the next one so that when this comes around, it doesn't catch. And we're almost about at 12 o'clock position. So AOE's good. Got the new nozzle put on. And now all I need to do is put 
the pay run version 2 hybrid in this thing and get it all calibrated and get the gun together. Always do your sensor check just like this. It's the easiest way to check your sensors. Always check them before you call it good and put it all together and then wonder why your gun's not working. This is very important. Okay, so before I put it the rest of the way together, here's a picture of what the inside looked like before I put the shell together. Okay, so with that out of the way, guys, if you made it this far in the video, hit that like and subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss any more videos similar to this. And if you like the parts that I've been putting into this airsoft gun, you can visit my webpage, wishtechairsoft.com. All the links for these parts will be down in the description below. And that being said, let's move on and get this guy into the receiver and do a test shot. Time to test. Got an 11.1 .1 lipo battery plugged in from Bosley Lipo. Here we go. Not bad. Full auto. Doesn't sound too bad. I think we're good to go to put this thing together enough to chrono and see how she does. Moment of truth. Got point fours in there. I put the spring that we used in the last chrono back in. We're going to do 10 shots and see what changed. Here we go. But one thing's for sure, FPS went up. It was averaging about 281.3, and we're now at 296.1, and we're sitting at about 1.62 joules. So um, I don't think the spring in this thing is a M140. It should be a bit higher than that with an M140. So I'm gonna try a different spring and see if we can get that up to 2.2. Okay guys, like at the beginning of the video, I was gonna try and get this thing up to 2.3 joules, but we got really close at uh, 2.1 joules, and I'm going to show you. I had a change to a different spring, and I found one that was right about 17 pounds on full pull, and I threw in a spacer to get this result. Damn. Look at that consistency. 2 or 3 joules. Pretty damn close. I might throw another spacer in. Okay, so I threw a spacer on the spring guide and let's see what we get this time. Oh yeah, <laughs> 2.17 joules. I think we hit our mark. This thing's gonna be insane on the field, holy shit. So if you guys enjoy the FPS consistency, I could build you an SR25 just like this one. All you gotta do is go down in the description below and click the link that takes you straight to the build form and just fill out what you're looking for and hit submit and I'll get to you as soon as I can. Other than that, that's all I got for you guys. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video guys. Take it easy and stay safe and make sure to call your hits. Bye!